I'll be showing eight new features in Teams. This includes new meeting backgrounds, webinar improvements, group integration, and a whole lot more. So let's get started. The first new feature is improvements to hover state with replies and edits. So I'm gonna hover over a message right here, and when this pops up, you're gonna see I've got the option to reply that's pulled out right on the hover menu. So when I hit reply, it will pop this right down here, and now I can give a message and hit send. In addition, if I've already sent a message and I wanna edit that message, I can hover again, and this little pencil icon is here, so it lets me edit that message really easy. I click it right there, and I'm gonna add an emoji instead, and then hit check, and I've done a really quick edit. This is in public preview right now and rolling out globally in the near future. The second new feature is improved video backgrounds and meetings. So I'm gonna join a meeting here really quick. I'm here in a meeting and I'm gonna open up the effects and avatars and I'm gonna show some of the new backgrounds, a bunch of new ones. So I will click show all here. And now first I'm gonna show some of the video backgrounds. So this is one, feeling dreamy. I'm gonna apply this and oh, look at that. It's kind of flowy little flower petals. There's some other nice ones. We'll do another one, Feeling Dreamy. This one's kind of nice. It's got a nice sunset that goes. This one's cool too. It's got some smoke going on, a little bit of smoke and trees. And then this one is nice. It's got a little mountain at the night background. So these are some of these video backgrounds that are available. But there's also some really cool regular backgrounds. So in this one, I kind of like Escape Artist. I've got my blue shirt, kind of got a blue vibe going on. I can choose some of the other ones. Here is one that is out kind of in the desert. Looks kind of cool. And this one is a nice green tree background. And then there's a couple of other ones. This is feeling dreamy again. Ooh, that's really nice. Got some stars going on. And you can just cycle around and play through some of these. The last couple I'll show, this is called Sense of Belonging. Well, that's nice. This is one of my more favorite ones. Kind of a little hoops and little flowers coming out of them and blues and purples. And then this one kind of has a DNA vibe going on. So I encourage you check out some of these new backgrounds and play with them. You might find something that's really cool. The third new feature is the ability to set office versus remote status. So in the upper right, I'm gonna click on my little profile picture here. And here you're gonna see this little plus. I'm gonna drop that down and you can set it to office or remote. So if I'm working remote for that day, I choose this and it makes it a little home. Now anyone else who's viewing my status in Teams or in Outlook will see what my location is. So in this case, I will go to office. It says I'm working in the office today. You can also just clear out whether you're office or remote. If you go here, clear location. So this is more of a generic setting. The fourth new feature is folder colors that you can create in files. This is very similar to what's just rolled out in OneDrive. So I'm gonna go to files right here in the general channel. I will click new and then choose folder. It asks you to create a folder, but also a color. So I'm gonna call this one purple, because for those of you that know me, I like OneNote a lot. So this is gonna be my purple folder, and we'll choose the purple and choose create. And now I've got a nice purple folder. So it's really easy to create a few colored folders. Let's do that. And there I've got a nice set of colored folders that I have in my file menu, especially for the educators out there. Having colors and folders is kind of fun. The fifth new feature is improvements to the webinar capabilities in Teams. In the upper right, I'm gonna drop down new meeting here and I'm gonna choose webinar. Now Teams has had webinars in the past, but there's some really nice updates to allow you to create a pretty professional looking webinar really easily. So we'll give this one a title and date and description. This is the new TPS report rollout webinar. Alex Wilbur is the organizer. I'm gonna add some other co-organizers and presenters and the event access will be public. I've added Deborah and Lynn to help me out with this webinar. Now I'm gonna say save and send invites. And once I do this, all the other options will unlock. Now this has been sent out to Deborah and Lynn since they are helping me out. You can add presenter bios. So it's really easy to add someone's bio if I wanna edit here. You know, Lynn Robbins, I can add her LinkedIn, her Twitter profile, personal website. So it's really easy to add bios. You can also add theming, which is kind of nice. So if I wanna change the image here, I can go and choose another image. There's my image. If you have a logo, I'm gonna add the Microsoft logo just for fun. And now I've got my theme set up. You can also expand registration. So there's all sorts of great options in terms of capacity. Default, you get a thousand. You could add other fields in terms of the forms that you're gonna collect data with. Attendee status, once you publish the site, anyone who registers will show up here. I'll show that briefly. And there's more options in terms of emails, reports, and recordings. Because I haven't published anything, you don't actually have this information showing up. But what you can do now is say publish site. So I'm gonna click this. It's gonna give me a confirmation and I'm gonna publish. Now I've got a full link that I can publish out. So if I click on share link, 
Now what I'm going to show is what this looks like externally because I just published this webinar so people can sign up. Now I've pasted that link in the top here. This is in a browser. This is what anyone else can find. So here's that logo and the nice little image I put, the details, the speakers. We've got Lynn Robbins. And now anyone can click to register. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click register here and it's going to ask me for my name. So I'll give Mike Tholfson my email address and I'll click I have read the terms and agreements and hit register. Now my registration has been processed. It sends a confirmation email to my Hotmail account. That also includes an iCal item so I can save that to my calendar and I can also share this out more broadly saying, hey, I'm going to this webinar. We'll close this. In addition, what people have is the add to calendar. So if they don't want to get the registration email, you can hit add to calendar and you can add it to all these different calendars right here. Really handy. We're going to flip back now to the person who set this up so they can see that someone has registered. I'm back signed in as Alex. He was the one who set this up. Now I can go and see the attendee status. It looks like one person has registered and it was Mike Thompson. Look at that. Now when I want to actually kick off the webinar, I'll go here and click join. That's where the webinar will start. It will be set up just like you have the other abilities to be able to have meeting options. It can be recorded. I won't be doing the detailed webinar in-depth video, there have been some significant improvements, including that new site that gets published. It's really nice and really easy to set up. The sixth new feature is that OneNote notes are directly integrated by default into Teams channels. We've had this for education customers, but now it's part of all commercial and business customers as well. So anytime you create a channel, it's going to create a OneNote notes tab right up here. You can see at the top, I've got a notes channel. So any channel automatically will create a notes part. And there's a notebook that is attached to the Mark 8 project team. So to show what this looks like for a new channel, I'll hit the three dot menu and I will choose add channel. We'll give it a name, my TPS report, and I will click add. It's going to add the channel. And you can see there's the channel with posts and files. And now there is a notes part as well. So I'm going to click on the notes tab here and it's going to load up that OneNote section. Here's that new OneNote section. We'll give it a little title. Bill Lumberg rules and I can just start adding all the pages I want. If I open this up, I can see other sections that have been added. So I've clicked on design here. It won't create the actual section until you go into the channel. So for example, digital assets web, you don't see that here. But if I go to the channel digital assets web and I go and click on notes, now it will generate that section. So it's just in time creation. It won't create it behind the scenes until you actually go and click on it like I just did here. If you want to open up the entire notebook, you can go here and say open in desktop or browser. I'll choose open in browser. Here's the full notebook opened up in the browser. You can see those different sections that I just created previously. And this whole notebook lives in that team. It's part behind the scenes of a SharePoint site, just like a notebook normally would be. To briefly show that notebook behind the scenes, I will go to the files tab here in teams. Then go to open in SharePoint. I've opened this up in SharePoint, the Mark 8 project team, and you can see Mark 8 OneNote. If I click here, it takes me to that exact same notebook that I just showed. The seventh new feature is GroupMe integration with Teams meetings. So I'm going to launch GroupMe here, and here's a chat with my friend Justin, and I'm going to go in the upper right and just tap the video, and it's going to pull up Teams video. So I'm launching my call with Justin. Hey, there I am. You can mute yourself. You can turn your video on or off. In this case, I'm going to tap on join call and we're going to get going. So let's tap join call. So some nice integration here. The eighth new feature is grid view on Teams mobile for education. So I'm going to tap Teams at the bottom and look at this all laid out in a much easier to grasp way, all of your class teams. So I'm going to tap into one. Now all the apps you need are right along the top and the channels are below. So I'm drilling into classwork, one of those apps. I'll expand it. See everything there. If I go back, I'm going to drill into a channel. Channels have more space for posts as well. So a big improvement to make that mobile experience better on both iPhone and iPad, Android and tablet. If you want to keep up with all the latest Microsoft updates and tips and tricks, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get all the latest videos that I post.